for stopping by PowerMation's YouTube channel. My name is Andrew Jagger, Business Development Manager for the Controls and Logic products. I'm uh, JD Teeter, uh, PowerMation Business Development Manager for Motion Control and Variable Frequency Drives. Today we'll be demonstrating the uh, Horner OCS controller communicating to the, the ABB ACS380 Variable Frequency Drive here. And uh, this communication is over an Ethernet connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that Ethernet connection, we have the Modbus TCP protocol. All right, uh, the drive can actually handle a host of Ethernet-based uh, protocols. Uh, we just picked uh, Ethernet um, uh, Modbus TCP because it is the most common uh, in protocol out there in the industry today. Now, JD, what reasons would a customer decide to enable the field bus on a VFD drive? Um, right off the bat, uh, minimize the wiring between the uh, drive and the control panel, right? Uh, typical installation, you've got a lot of knobs, switches, buttons, um, analog, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, over a field bus protocol, you have access to every parameter in the drive, right? Uh, along with that, that also gives you some expanded fault handling and diagnostics capability versus just getting a simple fault bit, well now you can dive into it and see well what's actually going on with the drive. Then you can display messages to your operator telling them what's going on uh, and even what to do to fix it sure. if you want. And then I think uh, finally you just get the, the, the flexibility of having a operator panel that can do pretty much anything uh, to, uh, to a drive. Yeah, changing any parameter that uh, is in there. The speed. Correct. The right. uh, torque. Yep. Control. Uh, uh, multiple drives, if yeah. you want. You can have a slew of drives in your control system, and maybe you've got a centralized control station so it can integrate into your existing IT infrastructure uh, versus, again, pulling a lot of wire uh, yeah. over the a plant floor. Sure. So it's kind of like the check engine light versus the connecting to the ODB2 port of there a car. You, you know, you only get a single LED saying, hey, check my car engine out on the VFD drive, hey, there's only a single light, or right. you can get all of your diagnostics back into your right. screen and your operators. That's exactly, everything from, access. hey, my motor's getting too hot, or I'm running too high in the current, or there's an e-stop condition that's present, uh, virtually anything you want. The other thing is you can you know, remotely clear some of those problems, and then you can record and uh, fault trace some of those problems too, so you can run a histogram on what's going on with your process. Sure. Great. Great question on the VFD. Right back at you. What makes the Horner such an ideal controller for this? Great question. The Horner controller is actually a logic engine, an HMI screen, as well as networking communications all built into one product. Uh, so with that, you're able to take a user input on the HMI screen, for example, zero to 100%, sure. and it can quickly scale it to something that the VFD drive is expecting inside the logic engine. For example, your ABB uh, 380 is expecting a zero to 20,000 counts for its scaling uh, of speed, and I can quickly add that in the logic engine to say zero to 100% equals zero to 20,000 counts and the VFD drive accepts that speed control. Are you limited to counts or RPM or, I mean, could you do other things like what if they're using feet per minute or inches or? Sure, yeah, any kind of okay. scaling can be programmed, uh, but that would be something that the uh, PLC programmer would be doing to, to the controller. Awesome. Uh, the other aspect of the Horner controller that makes it ideal is that you're able to be online to the, the drive over the Ethernet connection as well as programming it with the programming software so you're not having okay. to continuously remove cables and plug them in, take them out, trying to troubleshoot issues if you have them. You can connect in and see all of the data at the same time as the VFD drive is running. I can see that would be a real clear advantage for control engineers. Okay. Yeah. Last part about it is the built-in I.O. On, on the Horner controller. Right now, we're only connecting over a uh, Ethernet cable, but if you want to do some type of higher speed communication or higher speed control, uh, we have the onboard I.O. where you'd be able to send a signal over a uh, okay. digital bit to the controller. 
or to the VFD drive. Awesome. What are some reasons that people would use the ABB VFD? Uh, <clears throat> ABB is hands down probably one of the simplest drives on the market to set up, right? Even someone with very little uh, VFD experience um, can cycle through the uh, onboard assistant and have their application up and running very quickly. Um, drive Composer software is another yeah. very good reason. Uh, it makes it uh, easy to understand, it lays out the format of the drive, all the parameters in a very user-friendly uh, atmosphere. Uh, it gives you a, a diagnostics tools uh, for it. You can control the drive. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with it, right? Um, and uh, the other thing is uh, ABB has gone to what they refer to as their all compatible platform. So what that means is any of the drives with an 80 series, so an ACS 380, ACS 580, ACS 880, they're a common platform, meaning they share a lot of the same hardware, they share the same software, they all set up virtually the same, so you kind of have a unified control platform to work with. So when you go ahead and set up your program to work with one drive, yeah. you've pretty much got it set up to work with all of the drives, minus a few functions for some, maybe some advanced functions and features. But other than that, once you learn one platform, you've got all the platforms down. So you're saying if I took this Horner Control program that we developed here, and we had a 580 sitting here, rather, uh, we would be able to take that Ethernet cable, plug it in, and essentially get it up and running pretty quickly? Exactly. Because it uses a common drives protocol, um, yes. The Modbus mapping is going to be the same. Some of the differences between that, the 580 and the 380, might be how many I.O. points it has, right? But again, back to we're doing a field bus, yeah. we don't really care about that. True. So we're still mapping it to the same registers, and the control functionality is the same across the platform. So when you're talking motor sizes, mm -hmm. we could take this control platform and be able to control a motor that's, say, size of one horsepower all the way up to... 2,000, 3,000, wow. it doesn't... Wow. It doesn't... Wow. 2,000, 2,000... 2,000... 2,000... Matter, right? yeah, because you've got that platform down, That's so impressive. it all looks and feels the same. The only thing uh, that changes is the uh, the size and the insulation thickness of your gloves when you turn the power switch on. Sure. <laughs> All right, we're here to demonstrate the application that we have running. We have the Horner controller right here with uh, the system, and you can tell that it is giving you an e-stop signal from the drive. So I'll go ahead and clear that real quick. The e-stop is now clear. Uh, after an e-stop, you typically need to do a hard reset on the system. So once you do that, you heard a click yep. on the drive, and that was the drive going enabled and allowing it to now have power flowing to the motor. Right, we have a speed control uh, selector, so we can choose what speed. We'll go at about 62% uh, here, and then I'll hit the start button. It starts to go running, and you'll be able to see the motor ramp uh, to about 62% on our scale. Yeah. And if I could stick my... No? No, let's right. not do that. Yeah. We also have a forward and reverse button uh, where we're able to select forward right now. We can change it into reverse mode. You'll hear it ramp down and swing over to a counterclockwise clockwise, uh, rotation. I, I can confirm, and because it's IP20, I can't stick my fingers in there. <laughs> but I can tell you that it is going the opposite direction. We also have a soft stop button, meaning that it's a controlled stop. The motor ramps down uh, to a zero speed. If we ramp the motor back up and you want a fault stop, you can hit the E stop one more time. Here we go. And it glides to a stop. And the E stop uh, signal is now uh, active again. And again, we can clear the E stop, but the drive doesn't start, right? Correct. Because we want that to be a manual intervention to. Correct. manually like restart the system yeah so we again we'd have to hit the reset one more time hit the start it takes off 
And then we can adjust the speed using the slider. Go pretty slow. And a little bit faster. And all over a single cable. Mm, it is. No other cables. Thanks for stopping by the PowerMation YouTube channel. Check down below for a link where you'll find the application note, some manuals on the ABB drive, the Horner controller, as well as the example code. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Awesome.